On a compass, we have the directions north, south, east, and west. A bearing is an angle that indicates a direction. So we're going to assign angles to each of these directions, and that will be its bearing. Let's imagine that you were stood at the center of this compass, and I've placed a phone in your hand to indicate which direction you're facing. So you're going to start by facing north. We're going to assign north an angle of zero degrees. If we then turn to face east, we've turned through one quarter of a turn. A quarter of a turn is 90 degrees, so we're going to assign the angle 90 degrees to east. If we then continue turning through another quarter of a turn, we've done one half of a turn in total. One half of a turn is 180 degrees. If we then continue turning till we face west, we've done three quarters of a turn, and that's 270 degrees. And then we can do one final quarter of a turn, and we'd be facing north again. So we've assigned an angle to each of these directions, but they're not quite bearings yet. There are three rules that you must know about bearings. The first rule is that bearings always have three figures. You can see at the moment that east here has two figures, and north just has one figure. So we're going to use some extra zeros to make sure that they always have three figures. So north will actually be 000, and east will be 090. The second rule is that bearings are always measured clockwise. By this I mean that when we turn, we turn in the same direction the clock goes, which is this way round. This is so we don't get confused about which way we're facing. For example, if you started facing north and turned one quarter of a way anti-clockwise, you could say you've done one quarter of a turn, or 90 degrees. But we can't call west 90 degrees if east is 90 degrees, otherwise we wouldn't know which way we were talking about. So we've agreed that we will always turn clockwise. So east is always 090, and west is always 270. The third rule is that bearings are always measured from north. So when we work out a bearing, we must begin by facing north and then turn clockwise. So for instance, we can't start by facing east, then do half a turn and say we've done 180 degrees, so west is 180. As I said earlier, west will always be a bearing of 270 degrees. Let's have a look at how we can use bearings in some questions. So here we have a map of a town and it has some locations. We're going to specify that north goes up the page, and our first question is to write down the bearing of the bus stop from the bank. When the question says to find the bearing from the bank, this means we need to imagine that we were stood at the bank. So let's place our person at the bank. The third rule for bearings was that they're always measured from north, so we're going to face north and draw a north line to indicate that. We're then going to turn clockwise, that was the second rule of bearings, until we face the bus stop. So if we turn in a clockwise direction until we face the bus stop like this, we've turned through one quarter of a turn, or an angle of 90 degrees, so the bearing will be 0, 090. Remembering the first rule of bearings, that bearings must be three figures. Let's try another example. This time we're going to find the bearing of the bank from the library. Since it says from the library, we're going to place the person at the library. They're going to start by facing north, and turn clockwise until they're facing the bank. So if we turn clockwise until we face the bank, we've turned through one half of a turn, or 180 degrees. So the answer to this question is 180 degrees. Let's try another one. So this time we're going to do the bearing of the park from the bus stop. Since it says from the bus stop, we must imagine we're stood at the bus stop. We face in a north direction, and turn clockwise until we face the park. So even though turning anti-clockwise would be faster, the second rule of bearings is that they must go clockwise. So if we turn in a clockwise direction until we face the park, you can see we've done 3 quarters of a turn, or 270 degrees. Which is the answer to that question. Let's do one more. So this time we're going to find the bearing of the bank from the supermarket. Since it's from the supermarket, that's where we stand. We face in a north direction, and we turn clockwise until we face the bank, which is only a small turn this time, just that much. For this bearing, we haven't even turned through one quarter of a turn. We've turned through this angle here, which is in fact half of the quarter of a turn. Since a quarter of a turn was 90 degrees, this angle will be 45 degrees, so the bearing is 0, 045. This is to illustrate that we don't just assign bearings to north, south, east and west. In fact, you can have a bearing of any amount of degrees. Let's have a look at this with some examples. So if we place ourselves facing north like usual, and then turn through a small angle here, this bearing would actually be 027. If we turn to this angle here, this bearing would be 100. This bearing down here, just before south, would be 173. This bearing over here would be 225. And you could even do a bearing up here, or 333. So we can do a bearing of any amount of degrees. Let's have a look at how we can use this in some examples. 
So let's say we take two points A and B. And in the question, we could be asked to find the bearing of B from A. Remember when it says from A, this means we need to imagine we're stood at A. And we're going to turn clockwise from north until we face B. So we're going to abandon our person with a mobile phone now, and we're going to do this properly. So what we do is we draw a north line at A, since it said from A. We then draw a straight line connecting A and B together, and we imagine that we turn from north until we're facing B, which would mean we need to turn through this angle here. So all we need to do is measure that angle, and that will be our bearing. To measure a bearing in an exam, you'll need to use a protractor. We're going to start by turning the protractor side on, like this. The reason is we want this zero here to be at the top, since north has a bearing of 0, 0, 0. We then place the protractor so that this cross here is on the angle. So it looks something like this. We can then use the outside scale to read off the angle. So if we start at the zero at the top and read around like this, we can see that the angle is 110 degrees. So the bearing would be 110 degrees. For a second part to this question, let's find the bearing of A from B. Since it says from B, we need to now draw the north line at B. So it'll go like this. And then we're going to imagine we turn in a clockwise direction until we faced A. So that would be this angle here. This angle is a little bit more difficult to measure, and there are a couple of ways of doing it. If we place the protractor on in the usual way, we can see that the protractor does not have enough degrees to measure this angle. So one way is to take that protractor off and draw a straight line down from the point B, like this. We can now see that to the right hand side of the point B, we have half a turn, which is 180 degrees. So we can just work out the part on the left and then add this to 180 to get the total angle. To do this, we take the protractor and we place it on like we normally do, apart from we spin it round half a turn, so that the zero on the outside is now at the bottom. We can then measure around the outside scale like this until we get to the line, and you can see that this angle here is 110 degrees. So if we take the protractor away, we can now see that the remaining part of this angle is 110. So the total angle must be 180 plus 110, which is a bearing of 290 degrees. Now I did say that there were two ways of measuring that angle. Let's have a look at a second approach. So instead of measuring the angle we want, we could also measure this angle instead. To measure this angle, we take the protractor like this, and we measure using the inside scale from zero, around like this, and we can see that green angle is 70 degrees. So if the green angle is 70 degrees, and a whole turn is 360 degrees, we can work out the purple angle by doing 360, take away 70, which also gives us 290 degrees. It doesn't matter which one of these two approaches you use, as long as you're accurate with your protractor, you'll get the correct answer. Now let's try a second example. So this time we're going to have three points A, B, and C, and we're going to start by finding the bearing of B from A. Since it says from A, we're going to draw a north line at A. Since it's the bearing of B from A, we then connect up A and B. We imagine we're stood at A, facing north, and we're going to turn clockwise until we face B, which means we turn through this angle here. So we simply take the protractor, place it on like this with the zero at north, and then read off the angle on the outside scale. So this one is 64 degrees, so a bearing of 64. Now let's do part B. So for part B of this question, we're going to find the bearing of C from B. Since it says from B, we're going to draw the north line at B. Since it's the bearing of C from B, we'll connect up B and C, and we'll imagine we're stood at B, we're facing north, and we're going to turn clockwise until we face C, which would be this angle here. So this is one of those more difficult angles to measure. I'm going to measure it by splitting the angle into two parts like this. The part on the right is 180 degrees, so I can take my protractor and work out the other part. To do this, I'll read around the outside scale here, and you can see this one is 18 degrees. So this smaller part in here is 18 degrees, so the total angle is 180 plus 18 degrees, which is a bearing of 198. Now some of you might be thinking that a minute ago I made a mistake in the question. And I actually did, but I did this deliberately. In the previous part, I put the answer as 64, but you might remember that bearings are supposed to be three figures, so the answer should have actually been 064. Now I made this mistake to highlight how easy it is to forget to put three figures. In fact, I would say it's the most common mistake that people make on bearings questions. So did you spot that error? If you did, well done. If you didn't, then it might be something that you may do in an exam. So pay attention during the rest of the video and make sure I don't miss out any zeros. Let's have a look at a different type of question. 
so sometimes you may be given a bearing and asked to locate a position. So in this question there's an island, and this is you stood on the island at the Red Cross. North is in this direction, and there's a scale for this map where one centimetre represents three kilometres. And in this question we're going to try and locate some treasure. This is what we know about the treasure. The treasure is on a bearing of 084 from your location, and we also know that it's 12 kilometres away. When we say 12 kilometres here, we mean in real life, not on the map. So we need to work out how far away this is on the map. To do this, we use the scale. So the scale is that one centimetre on the map represents three kilometres in real life. We know the treasure is 12 kilometres away. So we can multiply the scale by four, since three times four is 12. So if we multiply one by four, we get four centimetres. This tells us the treasure is four centimetres away. So we know that the treasure is on a bearing of 084, and it's four centimetres away. Then we take a protractor and mark on an angle of 84 degrees. So if we go around on the outside scale, 84 degrees is here. So I'm going to put a little mark on my page to indicate where that was. I then take off the protractor and draw a straight line from where I am, the Red Cross, through that mark. So the treasure must be somewhere on this line. So all I need to do now is take a ruler and measure out four centimeters, which is here. So since the treasure is on this line and four centimeters away, it must be exactly here. Sometimes in bearings questions you don't need a protractor at all because all of the information is given in the question. This is much more common on the higher paper, but let's have a look at some examples. So here we have a diagram with lots of angles marked on, and we're going to find the bearing of B from A. Since it's B from A, we imagine we're at A, facing north, and we turn to face B. So we're just going to turn through this angle here, which is already given. So the answer to this one is 80, or 080 as a bearing. For part B of this question, we're going to find the bearing of C from A. This means we're stood at A facing north and we turn to face C, so we turn through this angle here. Now we've turned through the purple angle 80 and the green angle 30, so we add those two together. 80 plus 30 is 110, so the bearing is 110 degrees. For part C, we're going to find the bearing of D from A. This time we need to start at A facing north and turn clockwise until we face D, which is this whole angle here but we have a problem this time, we're missing this red angle here. Now we can work this angle out. All of those angles must add up to 360, since they're angles around a point. So if we add together the angles we know, 80, 30, and 100, we get 210. We can now take this away from 360, and we find the red angle is 150 degrees. So let's mark this onto our diagram. Now to get the bearing of D from A, we just add together the 80, the 30, and the 150 which gets you a total angle of 260. So the answer to the question, the bearing is 260 degrees. There was another fast way of doing that question. If you can spot it, let me know in the comments. For this next question, we have this diagram, and we're told the bearing of C from A is three times the bearing of B from A. And the question asks us to find the bearing of B from A. So let's have a look at the bearing of C from A first. This would mean we were stood at A facing north and we turn clockwise to face C. So that's this angle here. Now we can actually work this bearing out since we have two angles around a point again. So the bearing of C from A, which is the blue angle, will be 360, take away 135, which is 225 degrees. So we now have the bearing of C from A. We're told that this is three times the bearing of B from A. So we can work out the bearing of B from A by dividing this bearing by three. 225 divided by three, gives you 75 degrees, or a bearing of 075, remembering three figures again. Now sometimes in bearings questions they don't give you a diagram at all. So for this question it says the bearing of B from A is 140. We need to find the bearing of A from B. So for this question we're going to draw our own sketch. So if the bearing of B from A is 140, we can draw A, we draw a north line from A, and we'll turn clockwise 140 degrees and that's where we'll find B. 140 degrees is somewhere between 90 and 180, so we'll place it down here, and that's point B, where this is 140 degrees. It doesn't actually matter about being accurate here, this is just a sketch to help us solve the problem. Now we've been asked to find the bearing of A from B, so we need to draw a north line at B. We're going to turn clockwise until we face A, which is this angle here. Now we can actually find this angle without measuring at all. Both of the north lines in this question point in the same direction that's north. This means they're both parallel. 
Since they're parallel, it's possible to work out this green angle here. The green angle and the red angle are what we call co-interior angles. Since they're inside parallel lines like this, we know they must add to make 180 degrees. So to work out the green angle, we can do 180, take away the red angle, which is 140, which gives you 40 degrees. So the green angle is 40 degrees. We can now work out the purple angle, which is the bearing we want. This angle goes with the 40 degree angle to make 360, since they're angles around a point. So we do 360, take away 40, which is 320. So the answer to the question, the bearing of A from B, is 320 degrees. Let's try a second example like this one. So this time we're going to be told the bearing of B from A is 262, and we're going to work out the bearing of A from B again. So let's draw a sketch of this. Let's start with A and a north line, and this time B is at 262. We know 3 quarters of a turn is 270, and that's west, so it's going to be a little bit before that. So let's place it over here, and that's where point B will be, where this angle is 262 degrees. Remember once again, this doesn't need to be accurate, it's just to help us solve the problem. Now we want to work out the bearing of A from B, so we're going to draw a north line at B, and turn to face A, so this angle here. This time we're going to find this green angle here first. The green angle and the red angle are angles around a point again. So we do 360, take away 262, which is 98. So the green angle must be 98 degrees. We can then use this co-interior angles property again. The purple angle and the green angle are co-interior, so they add to make 180. So we're going to do 180, take away 98, which means the purple angle is 82. Since the angle is 82, the bearing is 082, given as three figures. Now since bearings are just angles, this topic can come up alongside many other topics, in particular on the higher paper. Let's have a look at an example. So for this one we have ship A and ship B, and they're going to leave a port at 12pm. We're told that ship A is on a bearing of 065, and ship B is on a bearing of 155. At 2pm, ship A has travelled 45 miles, but ship B has travelled 28 miles. And we've been asked to work out the distance between the ships at 2pm. So let's try and draw a sketch of what's going on. Let's start with the port P and draw a north line at P. We're told that ship A is going to go on a bearing of 065. So if we draw out a line that looks like it's about 65 degrees, we'll place ship A at the end of that line, and say that this angle here is 65. Ship B is travelling on a bearing of 155, so if we do the same thing, but a bearing of 155, which will be somewhere down here, we'll place B there, where this whole angle here is 155. Now since we know both of these bearings, we can work out this part of the angle here, angle A, P, B, by subtracting the bearings from each other. So the whole angle is 155, and the purple bit is 65, so the difference between them must be that angle there, A, P, B. So if we do 155, take 65, we get 90 degrees. So this tells you that the angle in here, angle A, P, B, is actually a right angle. In the question we've also been told that ship A has travelled 45 miles, and ship B has travelled 28 miles. So the distance between A and the port is 45 miles, let's place that onto the diagram, and the distance between B and the port is 28 miles. We've been asked to work out the distance between the two ships. So we're after this length here. Now since we have a right angled triangle, and we have two of the lengths, and we're asked to work out the third one, Pythagoras comes up in this question. So to work out AB using Pythagoras, we do the hypotenuse squared, which is AB squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, so 45 squared plus 28 squared. If you work out 45 squared plus 28 squared, you'll get AB squared equals 2809. If we then square root both sides, we'll find that AB is the square root of 2809, which using a calculator gives me 53 miles. So the answer to this question is 53 miles. This shows how bearings can be asked in more complex questions involving other topics too. I've put some tricky examples like this in my exam questions booklet. The links for those are in this video's description. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions in this video's description.